Morning everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna try and shoot a video this morning and hopefully make up for all the flaws in post-production. I am going to uh, go to my first autocross this morning. There's a uh, SCCA club here in town that races at the local uh, drag strip and figure eight course and they set up a track on the figure eight course. So, uh, let's see, registration and uh, tech inspection starts in about uh, I think about an hour um, and the Elko is still sitting here so good news got the brake light problem fixed yesterday bad news is I got to get this thing in the trailer and tie it down and the first time you do anything like that usually takes a few extra minutes so I'm gonna shut up and get with it well I guess I can't shut up for long but while I load the car I thought I'd explain kind of what's going on this is an 85 uh, El Camino with a stock 305. Nothing's been done to the vehicle except wheels and tires and seats. There are, in fact, there's one of the boxes right there. I've got uh, some sway bars. I've got a full set of coilovers, but I haven't installed any of them because I'm kind of wanting a baseline run. I want to know how bad this car is and subsequently how bad I am before I start bolting money. Oh, yeah, it's got a set of Sanderson headers and true dual exhaust. In an upcoming video, I'll show you how I changed the transmission mount to make it what they call a double hump mount. That'll be the same video where I show you replacing the driver's side floorboards. there we go second time I've put the car in this trailer I recently bought this trailer secondhand and this is its primary purpose although I bought a 10,000 pound trailer so I can do other things with it if you subscribe to the channel you'll be seeing more of this trailer I'm gonna be doing some upgrades to it as well as a walk around to show you what you get with an economy grade trailer Killcare is the name of the local track, and I'm only about, oh, maybe 10 miles from the farm. I'd come out to the previous event, so I knew where they set up and where they staged. I'd, I'd walked through the process once. Now it was just a matter of repeating what I'd seen. They run autocross on Sundays mostly because they're not running the drag strip on Sundays. This is the second time in a row they've been running a race on the drag strip at the same time as autocross. Come through there, boss. Okay, so tech inspection. Tech inspection was no big deal. He did tell me that my helmet expires next year, which is a cry and shame because it's a super nice helmet, but I don't wear it much anymore because I sold my street bike, it matched. So anyways, next thing we gotta do is we gotta put uh, the numbers on with some painter's tape. 
it only took me a minute to realize that picking a three-digit number was a pretty silly deal. I should have stuck with two, especially being that I have to do it in tape. This is weird now. All right, so the first thing they do is a novice walk, which we'll do in about 15 minutes. I probably won't tape it, but you can see people are out walking the course now. This is an oval track with a figure eight in the middle that this club comes in and adds all kinds of cones to, to make it interesting. The advantage I see here, having walked uh, the previous course and, and uh, you know, watched is you have more visual cues than just a flat parking lot as far as where to go and where to turn. So let's see if I can find my way through it by myself. The actual walk is in 15 minutes. All right, we're lined up in staging. Novices are running first along with a couple other classes. Obviously the guy in the aerial Adam in front of me, oh my God, I love that car, is uh, not in the novice class. My co-stooge, Eric, nothing but helpful hints. <laughs> His son is the one that finally got me off my ass to do this, so thanks to Nick. And uh, I'll see if I've got my GoPro lined up for the first pass. So I'm rolling up for my first attempt at autocross, and anybody watching is about to see the polar opposites an aerial Adam running before me, which was the quickest car of the day, and myself, who turned out to be the slowest car of the day. So I'm pretty nervous here. I understand the process, but uh, I'm going to roll up to the line after I watch this guy blow away, and we're going to give it our first try. So now that I'm staged, the starter calls in my number, and I don't have to wait long for the aerial to clear the track, and I get the go ahead. <laughs> so at this point, I did like they said, I took a deep breath, and I went for it. I'd walked the track twice and I had what I thought was the whole thing in my mind but I went around this first corner and realized I don't remember this next left hand sweeper. Didn't think I'd gone you know stray of the cones but I was questioning myself and actually at this point the infield guys were like yeah it's right keep going. So I proceeded along and you'll hear me through the rest of this talk my way through the course. So ends the Sunday drive. I'd completed my first pass in an autocross. I hadn't missed any cones or any gates, so I was good to try again. So with my second pass, I was much more confident that I knew the course and I wasn't going to go too far astray. 
through the entire day, I never ran out of car. The driver was the the uh, long pole in the tent. I don't have enough power in this motor to break the tires loose, and I've got really good tires. That helps. This course loops back on itself, so I get to do the slalom a second time. And it didn't take me long to figure out that one of the worst parts about this car is the steering ratio. Not only is it the recycling ball style um, steering as opposed to rack and pinion, so I have no road feel, um, it just takes a lot of turning of the steering wheel. And wrapping up my second pass, I'm happy to say I scrubbed 11 seconds off my time. This third pass was much like my second and still nothing to write home about. We did a total of six passes this day. I reduced my time by another two and a half seconds here. And this was pretty much the way the rest of my passes went. The last pass, which I'll show you next, was my best. This was my sixth and final pass of the day. This perspective was shot off my tablet by my buddy Eric, who you met earlier. And it's painful to watch, it really is. One of the things I noticed from this perspective that I, I knew was there but didn't really pay attention to as a, as a rookie driver was how much the body was rolling. And I guess that's a good thing because the next two parts that go on this car are sway bars. And in fact, uh, the next day I looked under the back and realized it didn't even have a stock rear sway bar like the other Elko does. So steering ratio and body roll were probably the two biggest things the car could use. Um, I need to lock it out of drive so it quit going into third gear. The transmission didn't want to shift down very quick and I need to brake a lot later. Here's that last pass again. This was my best pass of the day at 63.644 seconds. I'd like to uh, say a big thank you to the folks from the Western Ohio Region SCCA. Uh, they made me feel very welcome and uh, knowing I was a rookie made sure I had everything I needed to have a good time. So I will be out to the next event as soon as I possibly can and between now and then we'll make some upgrades to this car. Thanks for joining me on the beginning of this adventure and I'll see you next time.